WrestleMania 39 just epically concluded not even moments ago. So before we get going and we're going to jump right into things, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below on your thoughts on WrestleMania 39. The biggest shocker of them all, to much almost everybody's surprise, is Cody fell for the three-second tan, and Roman Reigns' streak continues now into the year three, winning the, with a little bit of help of Solo Sokoa at the very end, but epic 10.0 match, A-plus all around. Phil, let's just jump right in with you, get your takeaway on this, and then we'll talk about WrestleMania as a whole. I am in complete disbelief. Kevin Owens popped up, hit me with a stunner there at the end. I can't believe what I just saw. Dirty ending, Cody Rhodes losing. I am completely disgustedly bummed out, period. It's a complete downer. I honestly think somehow, some way, it's going to be The Rock who takes it off of him and – Somebody has to eventually, you know. I mean, he's got to lose one day, right? Even Hulk Hogan lost eventually. Only Father Time remains undefeated. So, <laughs> very well true. I, I just, I don't know. I, I wish I was more wrong about this going into this morning. But the more I thought about it last night, was I think Roman's going to win. And damn it, I, I hate it when I. What few times I'm right, I hate it when I'm right. Epic match, though. Epic it really match. Was. I mean, it was. It, it really was an epic match. I mean, it. You can't. A perfect match is a perfect match. I disagree with the ending, but it was a perfect match. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic, and both those guys gave it their all. Uh, both of them are my favorites. I mean, everybody knows that's watched us knows that Roman Reigns is my favorite performer out there. But Cody Rhodes was set up to win this one, and I'm completely shocked. Caught by surprise. And I think 81,000 of our closest fans were also in shock as well. And I maybe that's Triple H's mindset all along. And now it makes me even curious what Raw after Mania is going to be like. Very true. Can't wait to see it. And I'm already thinking about, hey, what's going to happen to Backlash? So here was my Raw after Mania. My boy Sheamus was going to win Intercontinental Championship over Drew. Clean, not affected, was Gunther. Cody wins the championship. And then who comes out but the last remaining person in the Royal Rumble but Gunther to challenge Cody Rhodes. That was my Raw after Mania. So I couldn't have been more wrong about any of that. Oh, it's, it's I'm still in disbelief, still in shock. All right, overall, WrestleMania itself, you have to give it a full A+. It, it, for the grade from start to finish, Saturday through Sunday night conclusion, do you do you give it the A+, plus or do you just you have a, a different perspective? I give it an A. I can't give it an A plus because I there were matches that I just lost complete all interest in. I I thought both nights opened up with their worst matches. I think that was smart. I, I mean, that's it. you just get them out. Of, but if you know these matches are going to be stinkers, why have them? Why have John Cena go out there and embarrass himself with Austin Theory? All right, why have? what we all knew was going to be a sub five minute match with Omos and Rock. Rock. And it was 455. Uh, yeah. And did anybody really want to see either one of those matches? Not me. I could uh -huh. care. I was so, I mean, thankful though. Because really of funny. that, I can't give it an A plus. I mean, you gave me to open up both matches garbage. And you, you could easily have opened Saturday night with Seth Rollins. Couldn't go wrong there. You could have opened tonight with Bianca Blair, Belair and Asuka. And you couldn't have went wrong there. So I, I you didn't need the two matches that opened up. They could have been uh, pre-matches, pre-show. I had eight matches receive an A or an A+. Plus. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, A+. Plus. The Cell match, an A+. 
the Gunther, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus beatdown, A+. Plus. The Tag Team Championship, A+. Plus. Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, A+. Plus. The Rey Mysterio match, I know you weren't a fan of. I gave it an A. Seth freaking Rollins, even during a hailstorm where I missed eight minutes of it, I gave it an A. I hear rumors it should have been an A+. And then I enjoyed the fatal four-way match where the Street Profits came out on top. That's eight matches that received an A grade rating for me. And then in comparison, I had, yes, two Ds, one F, and a C to round it out with only uh, the only other one remaining was the Bianca Belair match got a B plus from me. WrestleMania should not have anything less than an A. This is, I mean, this is the event of the year. You should not have anything less than an A match. And if it's not going to be an A match, i.e. John Cena, don't have it. And I could never give Dominic Mysterio a participation in an A match, all right? He's not a professional wrestler. I'm sorry. He should learn how to do something else, all right? He, he just, he's not a professional wrestler. He's not believable. He is not a He's not over with me, definitely. And I don't know the guy. I mean, he could be a great dude, but I don't think he's a good wrestler, period. End of story. And I don't care if he's wrestling his dad. I had zero interest in that whatsoever. Just well, me. those who know me know that I'm a huge Sheamus supporter. And that match was just 10.0 brutal. If you ever want to tell me that this thing isn't is fake, I'm going to show you that match 10 out of 10 times. And to me, that might have been the match that I no match truly stole the show because we saw the main event of both nights. But if there was an undercard match that was the best of the thing, uh, my money's on that. Now, yes, I had a hailstorm that eliminated seven minutes or eight minutes of that Seth Rollins match that also probably could have been A-plus material. But for me, the undercard itself goes to the Intercontinental Championship. And I thought for sure we, we'd have a Bobby Lashley sighting coming out of, in, in that storyline as well. So Triple H, good job, because as far as predicting what happens next, I've gotten everything wrong. Hey, look, undercard matches, I know you love the Sheamus match. I thought it was fantastic uh, because you had three great performers in that one. But, you know, I'll see that match and I'll throw Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair out there because those two ladies beat the hell out of each other. They came out of there busted, bloody, and bruised. And that was a just tremendous match where, you know, they did everything uh, the males could do out there and then some. It was brutal. Seth Rollins, uh, you know, he's fantastic. You've got uh, Paul out there. He, you know, you could – I. There's rumors he was trained by eight trained by HBK, so he's out there performing crap that's amazing. And then you can't take anything away from Finn Balor getting just completely busted up in there, losing a pint of blood, getting patched up, still finishing with some of those crazy spots, and still going through with it all. That match was brutal. So I thought we had four undercard matches that were absolutely perfection. I'm going to go backwards a little bit with what you were just saying about the Rhea Ripley match. WWE is starting to face a little problem now with, with the women's match because Bianca Belair, there's no one else that really can compete with her on the Raw side. And now that if, if Rhea Ripley is going to the SmackDown side, there's really no true number one unless they put, I guess, Becky back into the mix. But it, it seems like these, these two are destined to be back with one another. Ronda Rousey is clearly injured. Yep. She was only in there for the finish. And even then, the finish was, was spotty and horrible because of another injury to Shayna Baszler. I, I think the women almost have to combine the combine the championships like and make it an undisputed women's championship. Right now the women's division of WWE is in a lot of trouble because they you're 100% correct. There's only two competitors, and each one of them holds a belt. 
and no one else can make a good show out of it because the only women that can compete with them physically are injured. And, you know, Charlotte looks like she's going to take some time off now. So there's your other competitor. Becky Lynch just – I I I think she's lost a few miles off her fastball. And I'm not saying it's because of a kid, but, you know, Phil, you said it earlier when we were texting back and forth. Once you receive – once you reach a certain age for the women's side, mother time, if you will, it remains undefeated. Uh, yes. I mean, I, we both hate criticizing these performers because we know they go out there and they put their ass on the line and doing some crazy stuff. But that six-woman elimination match that they had on Saturday with Becky Lynch, Trish Stratus, and Lita was – absolutely atrocious i mean it was it was just bad and you could tell that two of the competitors in there had no business being back in the ring at all i I was thinking i was thinking about earlier if you if you put mysterio now as a true hall of famer there there was four hall of famers competing in the match five if you throw in cena and WrestleMania should be about the today, folks, and not about the yesterday. And usually WrestleMania for a while was also about handing it off to the future. And now is Cody Rhodes viewed as the future? I don't know that anymore. That's that it's 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 a real interesting puzzle now where they're gonna script things because the storylines fully reset reset. And they've got exactly, what, 8 plus 8, 16 hours to to, to, uh, figure out the new direction for the whole new programming. Because Raw after Mania, everything fully resets, and it's a whole new storyline and a whole new pathway. So where does it go from here? I actually have no clue. Usually I have some type of idea. I have no clue. There's no one set up to take on there's no faces that have been built up to take on Roman Reigns because no. you beat Sami Zayn last month at the last uh, premium event now the guy that was set up to do it in the last 18 months Cody Rhodes you just had him lose on a the only game. the only story nobody. the only story that you have created now is solo versus Cody yes you so have to successfully there, develop that. There but that's is, it. That's all you've got left. There is match number four for batch backlash. That's not your main event. That's match number four, or that's match number one. Yeah. And 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 Cody can win that one clean. Yes. And of course, they'll run back the Usos, Zane, and Owens. They'll run that one back. But it's there's nothing because the tag team was set up with Dawkins and Ford winning as being the next ones to come up, but they got to take on a heel team. There's just, there's just nobody left. I mean, supposedly they were going to bring back Randy Orton. He could take on uh, Roman Reigns, but that's, you a, know, that, I, I, that's I'm skeptical. That's not filler. I, I'm skeptical on that because, you know, Orton had uh, back fusion surgery and you just don't come back from that claim. That's now just a filler match to get you through. SummerSlam yep. is circle the calendar, and it's going to either be Money in the Bank or it's going to be SummerSlam. And I think what they're going to use is Money in the Bank, and it's going to be a double takeoff. And so they're going to split the belts come SummerSlam once someone cashes in and gets a clean victory on top of that. That's my only speculation of how Roman's losing. They've got to split the belts. But, there, but there's nobody to challenge him in either company right now. I. You know, it was a great buildup. It was a great story. Perfect through WrestleMania. But having this ending, I don't know where they go from here. I hope they know, but I don't know where they go from here. Almost like the uh, Sting Flair, I not Sting Flair, Sting Hogan match at uh, Starcade, and just how it how it directioned it out after that. So, all right, folks, listen, we enjoyed WrestleMania overall. 
There were some other great moments throughout the matches. I mean, great spots by some, you know, I, I do want to give some quick shout outs to some undercard performers as well, because just because you're not the main event of WrestleMania doesn't mean you didn't earn your moments. And, and just some different things. When Ivar did the moonsault, that's got to get recognized, okay? The 48 uh, bangers by Sheamus and just all the slugfest. Phil, you've already mentioned Finn Balor getting patched up. I, I'm not going to over, overkill that. The 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 almost broken neck by, by Charlotte Flair. Uh, there was so much undercard stuff. I, I want to make sure that they give the you, credit for it. You missed Jake Paul box jumping to the top row. Yes, I that, did. Yes, I did. I missed it. That left me with my jaw down going like, I can't believe he freaking did that. That is freaking impossible. And he did it. I was stunned. Jake Paul, I, I would I would pay to see one match, one match, one night, Ricochet versus Jake Paul. And that they set the that up at Mania. Match there. Oh, there. I'm sorry. They set that up, and it's Logan Paul. Uh, Logan Paul. Not his and, brother. Jake, and they set that up at uh, Royal Rumble. Yeah. When the two when the two collided. Yeah, I'd love that to was... see that. That could that could headline backlash. That could headline Money in the Bank. I don't care. Those two guys are fantastic. So, so much undercard as well that I want to show the appreciation for. Because, Phil, like you said, we both, we're we're not here to criticize this. If we are criticizing, we always criticize storylines and the script uh, of it, the business side. We do not try to criticize athletes with some exceptions. There are some people we will criticize. So, a couple that I don't like. But yeah. besides that, I, I thought they all came out there and busted their ass and put forth a hell of an effort. That's what I thought. I applaud them all. Any final takeaways? I enjoyed it. It was worth the build up. I so disappointed with the ending with Cody Rhodes not winning, but I guess that shows my buy-in for the previous year. I was fully bought in 100%. So I guess if I wasn't, I wouldn't be as disappointed. There you go. What are your what are your thoughts? What are your takeaways? Please comment in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.